You guys send this to me. This seems like an actual like reasonable uh, Trump supporter here on the right. So I'm kind of interested to, to have a conversation with this video. Let's do it. Who are you going to be voting for this election? It's policies that I policies that I'm okay. concerned with, not personalities. All right, well, that's fair. We'll take the moral argument out. Focus purely on Trump's policies. Let's do it. So who do you think has the better policies? The Republican candidate. Trump? Yeah. That would be Trump, yeah. I believe in smaller, efficient government. I believe in efficient government. I don't know about smaller government necessarily. If it's more efficient, sure. I would say like what policy specifically is Trump advocating for that would like reduce the government in like a meaningfully positive way. Um, <clears throat> and like, you know, Trump, just to be absolutely clear, when Trump came into office, one of the biggest things that he did was he increased the deficit, even though he inherited a solid economy under Obama. Uh, and like it, my, my thing is, is like, you know, I don't know. I feel like you should reduce those offices first in a meaningful way before you start rampantly cutting taxes. I, I just don't know what smaller government he's really advocating for. Not bloated, unaccounted bureaucrats that are seem to be in charge. In fact, currently, I mean, it's on both sides. we don't even know who the president is. I do. It's <laughs> Joe Biden. The guy that holds the office is senile. He is old. And he can't really talk very well. Uh, that is absolutely true. But he's been doing a decent job. I mean, honestly, he has been doing a decent job. Um, he passed some decent legislation. I mean, he codified gay marriage. Um, was it the CHIPS Act? Um, pretty big um, Inflation Reduction Act. Like, he did quite a bit. And he was dealing with COVID. Like, I don't think he had a particularly inspiring presidency. It was boring. It was coming out of COVID and recovering the economy presidency while dealing with two uh, wars that had negative impacts on energy, especially one with Russia and Ukraine, which we did pretty well. We're doing better than other countries when it comes to our inflation. Our inflation is down into like the mid twos. It's not horrible. It's not amazing, but it's not horrible. You know, I don't think that he could have done anything to stop the war in Russia. Russia was overextending itself and going into Ukraine. I don't think Trump would have done any better, to be absolutely clear. Um, you know, that would be reasonable, but I'm concerned with that. But I believe in the sovereignty of the nation and okay. border security. I do too. I just feel like sometimes we don't know what the problem at the border is. And the problem at the border is the asylum seeking process and like the way that it happens, right? Just to be clear, Trump down, shot down a border bill that would have helped that. He uh, pressured Republicans who brought the bill forward um, to no longer support it. And they listened to him. So it got shot down at the end of his presidency because he wanted to run on the border again. It was a good bill. Uh, it put more lawyers, it put more judges. Uh, it would have expedited the process of asylum seeking, which is the main problem. I believe we should be doing asylum seeking processes, especially as a country that places the entire world. Um, and if it wasn't us, it would be China or Russia, which I don't think have particularly good governments uh, that aren't free for their own people. And we put our hands in a lot of honeypots, partially so that we can gain influence across the world. And sometimes we destabilize other governments and we should help take people in after we've done that. Um, on top of that, we what is called brain drain. So we take the best in from other countries, people that are usually doing better economically, uh, intellectually, financially, et cetera. <clears throat> and that hurts the, uh, the countries that, that are still there because like those people are kind of left to their own devices after the most educated people. People basically go, they, they grow up, they get money in education. A lot of times there's nepotism involved and then they move to America and it's like, okay, well, what's left in those countries? So like, I don't see asylum seeking as a negative, but sometimes the processes are not great and they're slow. It takes like a couple of years. So people come here, they seek asylum and then it goes through two years of waiting for that. And sometimes these people aren't going to show up uh, for their for their court dates. If we did this in a month, instead of taking two years, we can get them in and out faster. We can either deny them and send them back if they don't have have a valid claim or we can get a process faster you know especially since like you have these people come in and they wait two or three years to finish their core process and they're already americanized by that point it's like we really like it's kind of almost unfair to displace them and their family so i think that we need more people there that's the problem we don't have like an illegal immigration problem really we have a, a an asylum seeking problem that we're not dealing with meaningfully and that bill would have been a step in the right direction even if you don't think it was far enough right so and inflation is out of control it's not it's actually decent right now i'm not gonna say everything is amazing or great a lot of the problems that we had with our energy uh, was with Russia because there's a war going on with Ukraine because they're trying to overextend themselves and take over our allies and we need to help our allies defend themselves and we need to be which because it shows confidence with our other allies and it makes them more likely to ally with us uh, in the future in case there's a war or even when it comes to just trade because they know that they're going to have our protection so we should have helped our allies we should not concede to Russia and let them push over into land uh, a lot of land uh, which they've you know uh, engaged in starvation over the past several decades of Ukrainians in that land and then implored Russians and said, hey, this is actually ours. I mean, there's a lot of scummy tactics that Russia engages in. Um, so inflation is not out of control. It's actually decent under Biden. I think right now it's like 2.44%. That's just like September. 
Uh, I'm not saying things are amazing, but things aren't as bad as we perceive them to be. And just to be clear, with Trump's policy of like what massive tariffs, it's just going to inflate things worse. We understand this, right? Like, hey, 20% tariff on all goods. You know, tariffs can be used productively. You can use that to engage in like a productive trade war, um, you know. Absolutely can happen, but like just saying flat twenty percent tariffs so we can bring jobs back to America, it's not good for us economically. I would say the biggest reason is because like even if we brought these factories back to America, most of the stuff we do is end of line production. So we're like putting things together when we already have the small little pieces that come from other countries that take like very low skill with labor. So we bring it to America, and like what's going to happen? It's all going to be automated factories. Like we're not even going to really see an increase in jobs if we like what are we going to bring back? Like shoe production for that <laughs> from other countries? It's going to be more expensive, but it's also going to be robots doing it because there would be cheaper. Uh, than people doing it, right? And I believe we should bring back jobs to America. We need to think a little outside the box. We have technology displacing jobs and driving down wage, uh, wages all the time. Look at McDonald's. Look at, um, I look there often, as you can tell. Uh, look at grocery stores. You see them automating jobs all the time. You look at one person uh, manning eight self-checkouts, right? So this is a new problem we have to deal with. I don't think any president has really come up with any meaningful, like, hey, what are we going to do about technology? Right. So even if we brought these jobs back, it's not or the industries back to America, like not really going to create jobs necessarily. So, again, it's going to be really bad for the economy to just be like, hey, America always. Um, it's not going to be good for the middle class with massive tariffs is going to surge the prices of things. So that's, you know, if you think inflation is bad now, imagine a 20, I mean, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent tariff. I've, I've heard upwards of 100 percent tariffs that he's talked about. And again, you can use tariffs productively to engage in positive business tactics or, you know, to defend national security or, you know, different reasons. Uh, but ultimately, Trump is not going to be good for the economy. I mean, even when he was in here, you know, you know, four years ago, I mean, he did good for the economy, but like not in a sustainable way. He inherited a solid economy from Obama. You know, Obama inherited a rough economy, right? The 2000, 2007 crash. That was the worst recession since the Great Depression. Um, but he inherited like a really bad economy with like about 1.4 or 2, 1.2, maybe 1.2 to $1.4 trillion annual federal deficit, which means we're spending that much more than we're taking in from taxes. At the end of his presidency, $650 billion, uh, which is basically cut the deficit in half on top of improving the economy. It was in good place. Um, numbers were solid. That's why he was voted in twice. Trump came in and he inherited a solid economy. That was the time to reduce the deficit, you know, to kind of like, you know, maybe tighten our belts a little bit and try to be productive. He insurged the deficit massively for really, uh, frankly, not really a good reason. And most of that went to people at the top. You know, again, I, we need to engage in more productive, intelligent solutions with technology being a huge driver of uh, our, our jobs Again, reducing the wages of our jobs and the disappearance of our jobs. I mean, we're talking about automated truck driving jobs. You know, what happens when that happens? That's a le that's a that's less jobs. It's like the most popular job in 29 states. And you might say, like, yeah, but they might put legislation in there to stop it. You'd be like, hey, you can have a self driving truck, but you have to have a pilot. Pilot. I agree with that. They should do that, and they're probably going to do that. But guess what? You can now justify paying that pilot less money. That's a reduction of a wage through technology. This is the biggest issue that we have to face, and nobody's really facing it in a productive way. So I can appreciate that he did something, but it was kind of unnecessary. And that's the best thing that he did was an unnecessary move that mostly benefited rich people and trickle down economics, which is not good. It did go to some of the middle class, but it wasn't really enough to justify it. And we need to do better ways to go at it. So again, Trump's not really that necessarily great for the economy. He put a ton of money into the economy, and long term, you could say that. That's one of the reasons, although COVID was the biggest reason of our inflation that we hit now on top of like, a, a you know, an indirect war with Russia, we'll say. Um, yeah, but like the economy is really not that bad. So sorry, I'm rambling, but. And uh, we've seen what they guy did be four years ago, yeah. and I liked it better than the last four years. Okay. Who do you think is currently running the country then <laughs> if it's obviously not Biden? No, Frank. They're, they're too, you get into a conspiratorial thing, but. Uh, it's probably Biden. I think he's at the end of his rope, but like the presidents always use other people helping him. So like I think that Biden is pretty decent. Biden is prime is fantastic. I don't think that that's contestable to anybody. He was really good at reaching uh, across the aisle, both sides. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Under the four years of Trump, do you think life was better for the average American versus the four years under Biden? It was better, but I don't necessarily think it's because of Trump. I think the situation that Trump was presented, which was a good economy, and then in my opinion, unnecessary tax cuts, obviously presented us with like a better quality of life. But Biden inherited a, a post-COVID economy, which was rough. COVID was huge. It was very big. And if you don't think that COVID was a big deal, you probably didn't work during COVID and you didn't really interact with it the way I did. I worked during COVID. I cleaned buses during COVID. I was a, I was a bus appearance maintainer, the, the lead bus appearance maintainer uh, for my, my county. I would I made sure that all these buses were um, sanitized every day so people can get the dialysis. People were dying. My uncle passed away. Uh, other people at the job passed away. Very sad. It was, it was horrible. It was horrific. Um, you know, my uncle was like, you know, one of like three very prominent male figures in my life. So very sad for me, at least. 
you know, and so that there was a reason that we shut down. I understand it was frustrating, but uh, yeah, and Biden didn't exactly inherit the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Prices were lower. The borders were secure. Our ad- so just to be clear, again, a lot of this is asylum seeking. I want people to understand that like the Trump's border numbers were pretty similar to Obama's border numbers. The reason why they were surging so much, and I do think Biden needed to do something, um, was specifically because people really couldn't get here during COVID because we had a massive shutdown. So after that was over, backlog of people flooded in because like, oh, I want to seek asylum now, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So just to be clear, this isn't like something magical Biden did or failed at doing. I think that we definitely should have uh, pushed forward in a way where we would deal with the asylum seeking process better. But again, uh, Trump forced conservatives to shut down a conservative presented bill at the end of his presidency so we could run on the border again. So, you know, I think that you can blame both Trump and Biden for this one. <clears throat> the series were quieted. There weren't any aggressions in uh, by Putin under or the Middle East during Trump's administration. So to be clear, I just want people to understand, we did this whole Russian collusion nonsense argument, right? Trump didn't collude with Russia, but the Mueller investigation did yield a lot of positives. And part of that, was, well, maybe not positives, but part of that was indictments for people around Trump. But more than that, we found out objectively and factually that Russia, without the, well, not because of Trump, but Russia, or not by working with Trump, Russia wanted Trump to be president. People have to understand this. They were running massive media disinformation campaigns to get Trump elected. This is not a non-contested fact. You can look this up. I'm not saying Russia colluded with Trump. I'm saying Russia wanted Trump in. You telling me that somehow um, Russia was wanted Trump in there, but they like still respected him. I just don't. I don't really believe that. You know, we saw Trump. You know, basically. Um, be too charitable towards Kim Jong Un, and that went nowhere. He, they still continue to test missiles. Nothing really happened. I don't think that he would have been strong with Russia at all. When it comes to Israel and Palestine, you could make a, a really solid argument that there were peace talks that were going on that were basically between uh, Israel and Palestine and other Middle Eastern countries. But Palestine wasn't asked to the table while there were restrictions placed on Palestine and none on Israel or less on Israel. So, or just fundamentally, um, not bringing them to the table exacerbated tensions and was probably a factor in why October 7th happened. It's not justifiable, but it's like, hey, you think that that was a factor? Maybe you should have engaged more intelligently in peace talks. So like no new wars. I understand that, but it's not like that simple. You could argue that there was a Trump was a part of the problem, you know, a pissing off Palestine, uh, you know, declaring uh, Jerusalem, Israel, uh, or putting the embassy in, in, in Jerusalem and exacerbating tensions with, with Palestine. Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's just say people took him seriously that he wasn't. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think anybody took Trump seriously. To be trifled with. And so I don't things think are quieter. That's true. And why do you think so many people support Kamala? Such a I think, honestly, because we have to get into the moral argument, for me, it's the insurrection of January 6th. Like, that was what really gets me. Um, once that happened, I was anti-Trump. It could have been anybody. It could have been any conservative. It could have been anybody else. But if you look at the details, he invited people for his speech on January 6th. He spoke in there. He used very uh, incendi incendiary language. Some of it was like, hey, be peaceful. But when you bring a bunch of people there after you've been going on a conspiracy theory for months about how um, you were, the election was stolen from you, and you're allowed to think that. You're allowed to contest that in court. There was no courts that found any level of credibility to that. But when you say that, and then you say in your speech, you have to fight like hell, like hell or the country's over. That's effectively what he said. That's going to rile people up. They attacked the Capitol. They they attacked police officers. They stole riot shields. They broke into windows. They broke into buildings uh, or into the Capitol building. They weren't being led by police officers. It was so overwhelming that some cops tried to move them away from Congress people, but they weren't leading them. And they were overwhelmed. And the whole time, instead of Trump stopping it or saying something on Twitter, that's like, hey, guys, stop. He waited, what, three hours before saying anything? Um he could have called like the National Guard could have done a lot. He didn't. He used that as an opportunity to try to pressure Mike Pence into taking in like faulty electors to vote against the will of the people in the states um, so to get him into the presidency. That's anti-American. That's all it took for me. His policies are also bad. There's really nothing redeemable about Trump. But that's a huge deal for people. That's like a biggest reason why I'm voting Kamala. So a visceral dislike of that guy. I don't care so much believe me these other politicians are no better than he in a lot of ways it's like no every politician is better than trump for the most part i'm not saying they're good but comparatively i mean it's like you want to want to drink a little piss or eat a little shit i'd rather drink a little piss a guy that's roofing my house i don't care if he's a butthole and that he's crude and rude and so forth but if he does a stellar job that's all i care about. well he never did a stellar job so but on the other hand if i get some incompetent boob that's a nice guy that i'd like to have a beer with 
That's not the guy who should be running our country. Yeah. I will say, I think that a lot of people are susceptible to Trump's um, no-nonsense attitude, even if he's an ineffective president. And it's working. I think people see Trump and go, wow, he's really good. Because they like, uh, they're, they maybe they're tired of some of the false decorum, right? The, sh- the shit shoveling down your throat from like traditional politicians who, just, who sound nice but don't really deliver on promises. Trump doesn't sound nice. He still doesn't deliver on promises. I mean, he ran on a lot of things, <clears throat> like making healthcare better, which he didn't do at all, <laughs> uh, you know. But um, I think that, and I said this a couple times already, but I think that we need a left, left-leaning Democratic president that's not a pussy. We need like somebody who's like a little bit of a foul mouth, like Long Island guy who's like kind of no nonsense, kind of says it how it is, um, and doesn't like you know fart around and, and pretend to be a decent person, uh, and maybe it's just a little bit less cavalier, and that would probably be uh, something that maybe people could resonate with more. Somebody a little bit more normal, you know, or a little bit more human. 